Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It's Lauren. It's Neiman. And we're at Furnier Furniture Co. And in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is taking you guys on a little tour of the shop, what we got going, the before and afters, show you where this place was just 10 weeks ago, show you where it's headed, and just to reflect on the last 12 weeks. Yeah, what do you say? Uh, let's do it, and shout out to Izzy for being behind the cam for the first time. <laughs> let's go inside. And we got a customer. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, ladies. We are open. Come on in. <laughs> I'm Lauren. And I'm Neiman. We just got our dream storefront located in Omaha, Nebraska. And we've got 10 weeks before our grand opening. And we are going to be transforming this space into a beautiful place where so much magic will happen. From painting and selling furniture. To hosting workshops and furniture contests. This place will have it all. And best of all, we're bringing you along on yet another journey with FFT. Buckle, Buckle up and enjoy. Enjoy the ride. All right, now that we got those customers out of here, we got the shop to ourselves. The first question that we have to answer and that we need to go over, what does Fournier mean? Yeah. Why did we pick Fournier? Right, I kind of explained it in the grand opening video, but we can go a little bit more into depth. I'll let you take this one over because you're the one that kind of conjured it up in your late night researching. So what does Fournier mean and why did we choose it? As I was scowling the depths of the late night internet, not the naughty stuff, I was being beneficial <laughs> and very productive <laughs> on this late night scaping of the internet. Uh, I came across furniture. I wanted to start with what are some of the um, synonyms and, of furniture. Before I knew it, I was to a page that led me to the word furniture originating from the middle 15th century word for near. French, right? French. 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 And when I started to look more into that and what that translated to nowadays, it was to supply, to provide, and to furnish. And as soon as I read those three descriptors of what Fournier meant modern day, mm -hmm. it really put me on a path of thinking about the last three years of this journey. And everything about that just fit our, what we built up to this point. And so I go to bed at 2.30, 3 o'clock, <laughs> wake up at 6.30 to this beautiful face. And I say, you know, it's just like, I'm waiting for her to wake up so That's I can tell her like, wake up, wake up, wake it up, wake up. It was the other way around. I pitched the idea of Fournier. And before that, we were having a little bit of a debacle between what we wanted to choose. So uh, we both liked it and that's what Fournier means and that's what why we decided on it. Yeah. It encapsulates everything about our business, supplying experiences, great furniture, uh, education, knowledge, providing a good time, providing entertainment, inspiration, and furnishing people's homes. So yeah. it's literally been what YouTube Furniture Flipping Teacher and what now Fournier Furniture Co. will be all about going forward. Yeah, I do think we might might be saying it wrong. Oh yeah? <laughs> I can't do it at all. Try it. But one of my Canadian friends reached out with a voice memo and he was explaining how it's actually, you know, French. And he's like, I love how you guys say Fournier, but it's it's actually like, I don't know, I can't do it. I do it, do it. it. Um, absolutely adore your storefront name. Um, and I love how you pronounce Fournier um, in the French, in French speaking, because I'm from Quebec. Um, it's called Fournier. So that's, I think, the biggest thing that we wanted to go over first and foremost. Secondly, I think let's take them around and show them what these spaces, what this whole shop looked like before, just in case you're joining us a little late. Yeah. And now what it looks like, where it's gonna go. Yeah, tour of the shop as is today, and then like just what we're offering, how everything's set up. Let's take a tour. Let's head to the corner. Ah, the paintbrush wall. I remember when this was a beige tan wall. We got it all painted and then Char and Kat, my two best friends, helped me dip all of these brushes and then we put them on this wall for a little photo op. And we've used it. We've used it when some of you guys have came and visited us to take a photo. We've also just taken photos of our guests. People really seem to love this wall. I think it inspires a little creation and creativity in people and then we got our neon sign which is amazing it really makes this whole wall like actually good I think coming over here this is our finished checkout counter 
So we've got our Fournier logo on the front here. We've got our stockings because it's Christmas, of course. And then I did go ahead and add that last middle veneer piece here. I know a lot of you guys were worried that I was gonna forget it. Truly, I had to have my dad like squeeze everything together from the inside. Um, he got his ratchets and he did that. <clears throat> and then that's the finished desk part. And then of course, you guys have seen the amazing shelf that he and I built. This was a labor of love. We've got our Christmas trees up top now and then our sign. That is something that everyone who made it to the grand opening signed. So we get to keep that and cherish it forever for all of those people who came out to support us on our very first grand opening day. Um, but this shelving unit is solid up there. Like it's not coming down. I think we did such a great job and it just, I don't know, it helps create this space and make it a bring it a bring a little bit more warmth over here and then of course we can't forget the thank you wall so these are all of the people or brands that have helped us create for near to what it is currently today so we've got our brands all up at the top we've got our family and friends who have helped us throughout the past 12 weeks we've also got a handful of you guys who have um, sent us so graciously some gifts that we had added to our Amazon wish list. I still need to add a few of you down here, but it's just growing because you guys have been so awesome and supportive. So next up, we've got the actual showroom. It definitely looks a lot different having all of this stuff in here. I just want to say again that I am so stoked with the turnout of these floors. I am 100% grateful that we went ahead and spent the extra time and money to get these floors laid. So another big thank you to Florette because they had an awesome choice for us. I think that this totally, totally elevates the whole entire space and it basically allows the furniture to be seen um, in a better light, if you will. Like it does, it's not a drabby floor that's n a nasty brown color, but it's something that someone could actually have in their home. And I think that it complements pretty much all of the furniture as well. Uh, so as for the layout in here, we've got our furniture pretty much stashed everywhere throughout. We wanted to make like little pods of furniture. Um, so we've got a mix of finished pieces and non-finished pieces. And so on all of our tags, it has the dimensions and then it's got an as is price, meaning if someone wanted to come in and buy this dresser exactly how it is, it would cost them $900. Then if they wanted to customize this piece, we've also got a price for that painted, it would be anywhere from $1,000 to $1,700. And that is when I would walk hand in hand with that person who chose this, and we would just decide what we're gonna do with this piece of furniture. So that's kind of the gist of like when you walk in, but that's also available online um, to where you can purchase pieces um, online as is. And then we would basically walk with you hand in hand and getting a shipping quote before you actually purchase it online. Um, or you could customize pieces from our online gallery as well. And then we would work on the shipping once that piece was finished up. Uh, we have our middle pole. If you guys remember, this was purple when we first moved in. And I'm so glad that we changed it to the cracked pepper color. Um, and then it just so happened that our shirt rack fit exactly eight inches around this pole. And so this is the perfect place to put um, and display our Fournier shirts. They are also available online. Check down below in the description box for the link to our store. Throughout the whole showroom also, we have different items on the furniture. So we've got different stems. These are little orbs that are really pretty. And then we've also got home decor items. So like everything is for sale, the basket, the stems, the home decor. And then also we've got our custom 
handle vessels. This is something that I am so proud of and happy with that we were able to do here and have available in our store. Basically, I went and I was finding these custom, these vintage vessels, if you will, or just different types of vessels that could hold candle wax. And then we had them created along with our Fournier Aromas line, and they are poured with the all natural soy based wax, super top quality. Some of them are unscented, some of them are the spiked cider, and then some of them are the vanilla. So all of them are really great smelling. It definitely has this place smelling super good when you walk in. So again, super pleased with those and all of those can be found on our online website as well. And then over here, one of my favorite parts is how this paint corner came together. I think that when people come over here who are just like excited and ready to paint something, they can just look at all the colors really easily. Um, you can get a little overwhelmed, but we're always here to help guide people in choosing the right paint and just making sure that people are getting exactly what they want. I really thought out the design of this space back here and I think that the colors really captivate your eye when you come around that corner so we've got Dixie Belle's silk paint line which you guys know that I love it's my tried and true love the all-in-one paint and then their whole entire chalk paint line which again my friends and I went ahead and created these paint sticks so that people can see like what it actually looks like when that color dries because you know that the color in the jar doesn't always match the jar the dried color um, once it's actually painted so that was key. I do want to work on doing that for the silk paint colors as well uh, over time and just really get that collection started too. Uh, we also have it over here on our Lily Moon paint. But as far as Dixie Bell goes, I'm so excited that we're able to that we're able to house that here. Uh, they have really supported us over the past three years. I love their products. I use them on a lot of my projects. And then same goes for Lily Moon. This is very, very high quality paint. Um, and I'm so glad to be able to bring it here to Omaha and just ha have it on hand, answer people's questions. I've already turned a few people uh, over to Lily Moon paint and even Dixie Bell from some of the other paint brands that are either locally or not locally available. So that is super encouraging too. Just again, a lot of people don't know about it since it's much smaller and younger of a company than something like Dixie Bell or Annie Sloan or things like that. We're definitely not finished in here when it comes to the whole showroom, the paint area. I still have got some ideas and I've probably said this a bunch of times, this is totally just phase one of what we are planning for this store. I wanna have some more designs and decals up over the top of the paint wall to kind of captivate people even from the front of the building when they first walk in like they know paint is back here we don't really have to say it and then just so many different things like maybe this won't be how this the showroom is all the time eventually we can do you know room scapes and things like that and have maybe what these dressers would look like with a rug and different end tables and things like that totally totally not the end all be all. This is gonna be ever changing. There's gonna be multiple phases to our whole store. And with that, here is another portion of our store. We've got our Fournier Aromas line. So along with the custom vessels that I was talking about earlier, which look at this one, isn't this one amazing? I know it's huge, it smells so good, but available in our online store there. Anyway, we've got candles, regular candles, the nine ounce amber jars available. We've got the wax melts available, and then we've got the reed diffusers available. I wanted to go into just a little bit of depth on like what each of these products is. So a candle is pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna open it 
trim the wick a little bit and then light it up and that will burn just like a normal candle. Now they are soy-based candles and with soy-based candles, you only want to burn them about three or four hours at a time and then blow it out. And that is going to help you get the most use out of your candles. So keep that in mind when you are burning these. And then the wax melts, these are going to be similar to the wax melts that you might find at a store, except you get a ton more in this jar other than just six in the plastic containers. We're saving plastic by using the glass jars, and then we're giving you anywhere from 10 to 12 different wax melts. This is something that you place on a wax melter. So it's, it's a, I should have had a one here, but I don't. Uh, it's a basically something that you plug in. There's a couple different ways you could do it. One, you could plug into the wall and it's going to warm up and melt this wax. So it doesn't have a flame like a candle does, but you're still getting that wax melt and therefore putting an aroma out into the air. The other way that you could do it is that they have uh, different contraptions and we'll pop some up on the screen. We'll link a few down below that we really like uh, that you can light a, like a tea candle underneath and put the wax melt at the top and the heat from that flame uh, melts the wax as well. So that is the wax melts. Neiman likes to call the candles flavors. I don't like to eat the candles, so I'm gonna call them scents. But the scents that we have with our candles are the Cabin Comfort, which is a Fraser fir kind of piney tree smell. Really good for this time of year. We've got the Sinful Chai. This one is going to be a little bit more on the cinnamony side, but also has that punch of the chai added on. You guys, I was so lucky to be able to work directly with this candle company, and I literally smelled tons of different scents and really nailed down exactly what I wanted to be in our first Fournier Aromas line. So I am so pleased with every single one. I would have them all in my house. This one though is probably my top favorite. It is the Spiked Cider. So good. So basically it has some apple in it, but it's also got like a hint of bourbon. So, so many different notes going on when that is burning. And that's, I've burned this several times already at home and I really love the finish on it and how it just makes our house smell so good. And then we've got the Vanilla Veil. So this is gonna be made with pure vanilla. So if you ever get yellowing in your candles that are vanilla, that's because it's made with pure vanilla. We don't add dyes to our candles or our wax melts or anything because that is gonna make it that much less natural. It's not gonna burn correctly and it's not gonna be very good for you to be breathing in the things that are coming from those types of candles. These candles are all natural. They're totally okay for you to to be like burning in your house and it's not gonna harm you in any way. There's no metal in the, in the wicks. They're all natural, all good. And then last but not least, we've got our reed diffusers. So I'll show you an open one that we've already opened. Actually, they're in the bathroom uh, because we wanna display and utilize some of the products that we have here in the shop. But we've got Vanilla Veil, Spiked Cider, Sinful Chai, Cabin Comfort, and then for just if you're more feeling on the flowery side, we've got the Blossom Bliss. It's kind of like a white peony smell. Again, I smelled these as well. So good. And um, also, these are just our first scents. Let's just say that. We're definitely already in the works to build out some more scents. So if you've got any suggestions or you like specific scents, put them down in the comment box. Uh, but here is a working reed diffuser here. So what you do is you unwrap the reeds and then you dip it into the wax, or the oil, sorry, 
you'll turn it over and then that oil will diffuse into the room and make it smell really good. And then over time, you can continue to kind of turn over those reeds or you can leave it as is and kind of let it last longer with a little bit of a less invasive, abrasive smell. But smells so good. That's the sinful chai. And then we've got the spiked cider in the other bathroom. And speaking of bathrooms, these turned out so great. Everyone absolutely loves the bathrooms. And honestly, I think that sometimes people just go to the bathroom so that they can see it, which is totally what I was going for. So I'm super stoked with how those came out and how everyone loves those as well. And then we've got the back room here. You guys have seen this in so many different stages. Uh, right now we've got it set up to where people can still come back here and check out the excess furniture, let's just say that didn't make it out onto the showroom. We don't want to crowd the, out, the front room there. So we've got it all stacked nicely so people can kind of go up and down those aisles. Um, but here very soon, we are going to be beginning to film more content, meaning that we are getting back to furniture flips, which I'm super excited about. I've been missing it. I've loved the journey of the past 12 weeks, uh, getting this place ready for opening, but we're past that now. We are going to begin flipping furniture again, which I cannot wait. I know you guys cannot wait, but I just want to say thank you so much to all of you for supporting us through this 12 week journey, getting here. Uh, thanks for supporting us. And then also if you're really here for the furniture flips, stay tuned because you guys know what time of year it is. So yeah, that is the shop. That is the storefront. That is everything that we've been working on over the past 12 weeks and where we are now. We've actually got people coming in and out of the store every single day. We've got Izzy here every day working with us. Um, it, it hasn't, and me in here working with you. It hasn't what? Yeah. It hasn't been like it's going to be yet. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like, but the first week, you know, it's all like, okay, you know, who's going to be here? What do we need to do? What does Izzy need to do? Just like filling our roles and feeling out our roles, honestly. Uh, but we've also been super busy getting the online store so that all of you guys wouldn't miss out on like what we've got here in person. Yeah. Figuring out the store hours. I mean, I think the word of the month <laughs> is like figure or figuring figure yeah <laughs> but it'd be figuring out let's put that together yeah it reminds me of the, that inst uh, american no not american family state farm insurance like one word ah i'm gonna butcher it let's just pop it up this entire season boils down to one word bundle home and auto but that's four words not if you bundle them oh. It's insane that I think that this makes me feel like we have an actual business and that's nothing against what we've done over the last three years, but having a physical store. And I think the biggest change is people can just walk in here freely from yeah. a certain time frame that we deem open. Mm -hmm. And then like we have to <laughs> like cater or, yeah. you know, kind of give them that attention. Yeah. And that's what I mean, I guess, when we're like, okay, it hasn't been truly what it's going to be like, because starting tomorrow, I think, like Neiman and I are gonna be back in the workshop. Uh, we'll still be able to interact with customers if there's specific questions that maybe I need to answer and things like that. Mostly like about paint and then about like customizing because Izzy's learning really fast and she already can handle you know, chatting with customers and whatnot. Izzy is, was a godsend for us, I think. Um, we're really, really stoked to have her on the team because, I mean, she's just a jack of all trades. Like anything we tell her to do or ask her to do or have her do that day, it might be completely different than the next day. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to throw that in there because there's a lot of, there's been a lot of moving pieces and what she has been doing for the first two or three weeks that she's been with us is now completely a different job yeah. than like it was. So. Completely, entirely. And we told her that too. And, yeah. she, and that's why I love like, like 
who she was because, or who she is, because she was totally fine with that yeah. out of the gate. About and like ready for it and like desiring that too. Embracing it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what do you think was the hardest part of this whole thing? Let's start there, let's start with the hard part. I think the hardest part is um, trying to not have such high expectations and then like if the expectations aren't fulfilled, like how do I feel about that? Yeah. Give me a, like a, an example. Um, I don't know. I guess I just... You, you do we, know, so share. I mean, we have sold a few pieces of furniture. We sold one on grand opening and we sold um, one online now. And so I guess I had higher hopes for people, you know, coming in, telling us that they are so stoked and excited and, you know, hopes this works out for us. Um, and I don't want to discredit anybody for saying those types of things, but this is only going to work. This portion of the business is only going to work if people, you know, support us in those ways of like purchasing furniture from us and i'm not telling everybody to come out and buy furniture i mean that'd be great but at the same time it's more like uh i just i just feel like i need to lower my expectations and know that it's only been one week yeah i think that that might be one of the things to do is like okay it's been one week yeah i think it's it's i've fall into the same boat with you of the expectations and it's it's not fair to have those expectations of people but I think it's also hard to not because you know the comments that we read the messages that we get yeah my hardest part of this whole thing I think is now just happening it's finding a rhythm yeah in the store yeah. Because especially for me, I am a people's person. And so when somebody walks in the door, I want to be there to greet them. I want to have a conversation yeah. with them. I want to build rapport. I want to hear about them and all that. Now, and I'm finding myself getting that happening often, breaking my focus. Yeah. And me not feeling like everything is getting done, especially for behind the scenes stuff, the business development, the brand deals, the online store, the marketing, all of that, it's not getting done to the extent that I can get it done. So just trying to find that balance within myself and within my role in this business, that's what I feel like I'm just finding the most difficult part yeah. in these last couple of weeks. No, I agree. It's like, okay, I want to be spending my time, not even want to, but like, I am spending my time doing this when I really should be spending my time doing this. Yeah. And knowing, I guess, you know, this is also our first time really ever having someone in person that is capable and able to do the jobs that we've been doing or even haven't been doing. But I think at this point, we're all just so excited about having the store and having people come in. But definitely there's some people that can come in and just talk your ear off, yeah. which is great. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, like, you know, we're running a business. And so I think that me and you are gonna have to continually like just take small steps back um, and let Izzy handle it yeah. and just we trust her already yeah uh, but then just like you said finding that rhythm finding that flow of okay now we've basically got two businesses and we need to focus more on the FFT business side of it and still let and let run. Izzy really run and focus on the Fournier like with our guidance right and input and help yeah. needed right yeah yeah and okay so what's the most favorite thing about the last 12 weeks that you've that, that has happened or that you can reflect back on and be like yeah that stands out oh I don't know the last the 12 things or 12 weeks all the 12 weeks yeah there's too many I mean uh, the one favorite thing 
I mean, however, what is easiest for you to answer? Uh, I'll go first. Just okay. so my my biggest thing, um, and I was like flooded with emotion, and I I wish we would have recorded this video even closer to the moment because I was so like in gratitude and in grace and in love, and I still am. Is just everybody coming together. It wasn't a singular moment, but it was like that three day stretch from November 4th, basically, yeah. to November 1st, where I'm like, you mean holy the first shit, like we have so many people that love us and that want to see us succeed. And they, they, they've, you know, a lot of people talk, but these people de devoted man hours, physical labor, yeah, and with nothing in return. Right. And they spent days here mm -hmm. with us helping us put this place yeah. together and so long hours long hours like moving furniture all around shout outs to my boy cody um nana just sweeping and cleaning and yeah. everything we needed her to do mom and dad like getting it's just i don't know like i obviously i knew all these people loved us but that right. just takes it to a whole nother level because nobody had to do anything like that yeah so that was my favorite moment i think it took me a couple days to like get past that that like these people these core people love us enough and like we know like you said we knew i'm getting emotional just thinking about it like we knew that they loved us but the fact that they were willing to to take time off work to drive here to fly here just and dedicate that time to us yeah I don't want to leave people out either because I feel like there's like a set group of people I want to like Michelle like Cindy from Colorado Springs and from Tennessee I said Cody or no I keep saying Tennessee North Carolina yeah um I mean Marty our landlord for just always being there to help with the a hand let us use his tools his ladder his uh scissor lift it's literally his like skills and like doing stuff for us he was in here literally the morning of grand opening fixing the toilet that just happened to like kind of go out yeah and yeah i mean we've just been blessed with <clears throat> i mean the family and friends that are here present um, to support us and to, you know, just believe in what we're doing, obviously, or else they wouldn't be putting that time and effort right. toward it. Um, the people online too, like that were there. I don't know, I just feel like we've been really blessed over the past three years, especially. And I think it just- All came to a singular moment of yeah. like, it oh okay like yeah we say it we feel it but i think it was i mean just i being up there and seeing the people outside that was where it just all came to a single moment and hit yeah. me and i just couldn't hold back from like yeah. just tears because it's a beautiful thing i think i have to piggyback on that being my favorite event but i think my favorite event from or favorite thing that's kind of happening when people are coming into the store is like me chopping it up with people who know my language about paint yeah or not even know my language but like i what i'm saying to them makes sense yeah. um like they've got some type of knowledge you know i talk to you guys on camera all the time but there's no head nodding there's no question asking like at that moment right, immediate, um, and forward. so just like guiding people to picking out the right paint or seeing people purchase the paint and the items that are going to help them refinish things someone purchasing paint going home and painting it calling me and saying order I more, more. <laughs> because i love this stuff yeah like that is that has been like one of my favorite parts of being open uh, the past week going back or going piggybacking off of that just a, a thing that makes me excited about having this is the online store and going to drop off orders mm -hmm. <laughs> like that yeah. was just like i can't like i i, I had to make one trip of course <laughs> so i had to big bundle it how much boxes was that like at least eight to ten yeah 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 and there was like this nice lady that held the door and then um, when I got up, I don't know, it was just cool, it was fun, and it was 
I was happy to be like taking stuff that we curated, yeah. created, put thought and energy into, and like shipping that off to, for people to enjoy. Yeah. I think it's so much different than just like a t-shirt, even though we sold some t-shirts, like we've shipped some yeah. t-shirts, but like the, the candle formulas where you're able to smell that and you picked out and people wanted to buy that. Yeah. And I know they'll sell themselves because right. like you walk in this place and it just smells like yeah. a haven. I've got of, the cinnamon on me. <laughs> so it's hard to like kind of articulate that over camera and but people like trust in right. really it's the quality of your work and like what they've seen over the three years. Like I can trust that like she would make a good smelling can the candle yeah. and that's it's cool to, to see that. But it was fun to drop those right. things off. So, OK, what about things that you're excited for? going forward <laughs> i'm excited to get back to furniture flipping <laughs> i am not gonna lie yeah i i that, that's like all my mind is on like i've had a really hard time especially this past like these past few days not working on furniture yeah but yeah. knowing that other parts of the business need to be addressed yeah. and like taken care of as well but I'm just like excited about that. But then also like to start getting more custom, you know, furniture orders, people coming in and, you know, trusting me to like help them create something uh, for them. Okay, so for- What about you? Uh, mine would be to continue just to be able to expand online. like. I felt like for the last three years, we've been so limited to our immediate circle of people um, here in the area. But now that we have the options to ship furniture and we have goods that have been selectively curated by you, like I just want to get thing, good things, fun things, helpful things into people, decorative things, people that like that they enjoy. It, it speaks to who they are as people yeah. and you are able to find it for them. I'm excited just to expand that side of the business. Um, I think it's going to be fun and I can't, I, I'm excited actually to go now searching and sourcing yeah. materials and items. Yeah. And then, and then we'll be able to record that you guys will see it and then be able to like wait for it to come online, which I think it would be cool if we did like, you know, online drops or something where you guys like knew, okay, everything in this video is going to come out online. like you know, yeah. the next day or even it is available or something, however we decide to do it. Yeah. I'm excited for what God has planned too because I feel ever since having the storefront, we're getting calls from people like there's just, and we kind of have to have that discernment because we could get carried away and be saying yes to everything. But I just feel like this is opening up uh, opportunity and avenue of opportunities to different ways to do business to grow the business all of these things now that we have a weirdly a physical storefront so yeah we just getting calls all the yeah. time I'm like hey lauren for your furniture cup when your furniture cup <laughs> i'm like dang i didn't i mean i didn't realize same so it's kind of weird like we've been here the whole time <laughs> yeah and, uh, like we've had this youtube channel yeah, and our like, contact info out <laughs> for sure. anyway so what else reflection wise i mean like what if you had somebody ask you you know what would you do differently in getting a storefront ready to launch mm -hmm. what would you do differently i think the only thing i would really do differently would be like to try and research a little bit more into like how much it all takes yeah. to get to this space, this Point. stage. This, yeah. yeah. What aspect of it took maybe longer or did you not anticipate, like why that? Um, what kind of surprised you about the process? No, I guess just like the cost. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I didn't think about either. <laughs> like, or I guess I thought about it. I just yeah. didn't think it added up so quickly yeah yeah and then just you know with needing to kind of decide you know what do we want to carry and what do people want to purchase and you know I want to really focus on the second hand 
items, but it's a little bit more difficult for me to source, you know, secondhand, nice, non-cheesy Christmas decor. So therefore we really don't have any Christmas decor, but I feel like that, that if I could find something that people would like, then they would come and they would buy it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just lots of learning, like ready for next year type of thing. Yeah. Um, learning and then maybe by the end of next year when we're at Christmas time again, it's, you know, okay, maybe we, you know, do kind of expand into the new items, but then have a mix of new items and used items and marry the two, but then people are more likely to come and get, you know, come for the new, but leave with the old, I don't know. Yeah. It's weird not being home. Like even the days that we were like here, working on the place, getting it ready, it didn't feel as weird as it does now. Yeah. And I'm like, this is where we're working now. Yeah. Like it's super weird. We've been working at home for the past three years. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be, you know, the computer work or the Garage. furniture yeah. or the Airbnb, just like all of it has been at home. Now we need to get up, you know, go to the gym, go home and shower and then come here. And Dress then, reasonable. Yeah. I mean, seriously, like it's, you know, I need to, I make my breakfast here instead of at home because I want to be here at a specific time and just, yeah, it's totally different. It is totally different. You know, you quit your nine to five or my eight to four to, you know, work on your own or for yourself, but we work 24 seven. More than what we would do at a eight. Because yeah, I like, mean, I was we're even here with, before Izzy gets here and we're here after she yeah. gets here. It's like a prime example. Even when I, was teaching like I still thought about my classroom and stuff at the nights and on the weekends occasionally but I mean this is 24 7. Yeah how do you feel about the reception to a new store like this in the Bellevue Nebraska area like how do you feel that's been going? I think it's been going great I mean you know we that's one of the questions that we've asked people when they walk in is, you know, hi, how can I help you? Or, you know, how did you hear about us? Or something like that. And a majority of the people say that they've found us through the news channels, KETV, Newswatch 7 here in Omaha, or now they've run an, a story in the Omaha World Herald. I'm pretty sure are they doing another one this week this rb county times or no i don't know oh. no that one already would have released oh okay yeah <clears throat> oh that was the one in the world herald that's yeah, right that's yeah cool. but anyway so like just our news channels sharing it over and over uh people coming from facebook like i didn't realize how many people still watch the news but especially the first week when the story was like fresh and brand new and hot like it was every person that came in that lead source was from one of the news channels. Yeah, I would say too though that like they might not be watching it at the 10 o'clock news, but yeah. because it's popped up on their Facebook or something, then it's, you know, not necessarily that they're like actively watching the news. Yeah. But that story popped up and they're like, oh, you know, YouTube sensation, you know, that's what they coined it as. Yeah, they did dramatize it a little bit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> was, I'm well, a no. sensation. Yeah, I just, I was like, don't put us on a pedestal like that. That just makes me they kind of They just do it because of the news. Oh, well, it's, yeah, drama or dramatized. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. It's like we found ourselves in the, here a couple of times. And when I say a couple of times, that means basically daily. Like I just posted this morning on my, my personal Instagram. It's just insane to walk into this space and especially think about where it was at one point and to realize that this was a blank slate. We had to do a lot of work, but there was a lot of vision and a lot of planning and a lot of executing as well that went into this. So it's cool from that 
aspect for me. I'm such an ideas person. And in 12 weeks to be able to, spend 10, 12 weeks to be able to bring that vision to life. You know, like with FFT, we didn't really have the vision for it to be what it is. It kind of just grew into it. This was really cool because it reminded me of like playing sports where you work all off season, you see what the result is that you're going to have at the at the end of training camp and going into the fall season. Um, I just felt like I haven't been able to really like intentionally plan something like that and then execute on it. Because like, in all honesty, like with our goals, like I always feel like, you know, we write those goals at the beginning of the year and, you know, excited and everything, but then we kind of, things change really. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing is like they change and then like our focus changes and our goals change at that point. But here it was like 12 weeks, here's the goal, have it up by this date, and then we freaking did it. I mean, we definitely gave ourselves a deadline and then we shared that deadline with everyone. So like, we <laughs> didn't helped. really have a choice. Yeah. Um, Cause I mean, even with the Airbnb, when we were doing that, you know, that was only gonna take a couple months. Right. And right. then that took us 14 months. So yeah. there was no deadline that people were counting on us for. So I think that that really helped. That's but powerful I don't to say that. Think that. I don't think, I think that we, even though it was like crunch time at the end, I think that it was necessary to have that like solid deadline that people were going to be here on that day or else we it w could have just continued to drag out and drag out and drag I agree. out. We would have not opened this year. Um, right. You know, we would have just kept not being open. And well, because then it's like, okay, like this needs to be perfect. So like until this place is perfect, why rush it type of thing, yeah. which it's like, that's fine and all, but you can find that that level of perfection is like the carrot in front of the rabbit's face, right? Oh, like yeah, it just continues to extend itself, extend itself, extend itself. Yeah. And like we have now, I think, especially me, when we were maybe four, three to four weeks out, we were like, okay. It's real. This is stage one. Yeah. This is oh, phase yeah. one, and we're going to be able to continue with phase two. And like, it doesn't all have to be done. Like, we totally thought that yeah. our podcast studio was going to be done. Yeah. And we were going to have, you know, the break room furnished and the office furnished. The and walls like the, covered in their decals. Yeah. And... Like, me painting rainbows and like the whole back workshop. But, you know, things changed and you know when a when the desk takes me a week and a half to do, like timelines have to change, but someone's gotta give because we've got this deadline that people are going to be here on this day at this time. And I'm telling you that mindset shift like that acceptance that articulation of yeah. that thought it was just like so freeing right. for us to enjoy the process because we weren't stressing like oh, this place has got to be perfect yeah. by November 4th it's like no this place is going to be what it is by November 4th and that's going to be everything that it should be by right. November 4th I think 4th. you definitely had a better understanding of that before I did and yeah. then I was finally like okay yeah like it's getting closer and closer and we just aren't gonna be where I thought we would be but right. Again, we had so many different commitments within that 12 weeks time of span that we already committed to before we even got this space. You yeah. know, weddings to attend, weddings to work, like different trips that we were already going on, um, different weekend outings that we already signed up for type of thing. And we didn't want to let those commitments go. Right. And so we just took it in stride and did what we had to do to get things that the way that they are now. Yeah. I'm really proud of where we can, where, of where, how far we've come. Yeah. I am. Like in the three years, but also in the 12 weeks. And like you said, I like. And in the seven years. And in the seven years. <laughs> I'm excited where it's going to go. And, you know, shifting our mindsets, like this business is a product based business. And so, you know, I think that there is a level that 
we've got to get to in understanding like it's okay to talk about our own products. It's okay to talk like not not even to hard sell, but these are things that we we believe in at the yeah. end of the day. And I think that's a mindset shift that we haven't been like, or we haven't like that's not what this and it's not what the channel is going to be about by any means. Yeah. But we definitely want to express we're building something and in order to continue to build this um, that's just going to be a part of the process but we're excited about the things that we are creating we believe in the things that we're creating and we know that they're quality things that we're creating and selling so um, I invite you guys uh, and I know you know don't ever feel like I'm trying to force you or we're trying to force you to buy anything but if there is you know that support that you want to take upgrade it from comments to supporting local like you're buying the things that we're doing that we're producing that we're bringing to you and you could buy them at Walmart for probably cheap fur and fill Mr. What's his name? Walmart? No, Walton, isn't it? Or is that the Disney guy? Anyway, That's you, Walt Disney. we can fill the, the billionaire's pockets or you can come over to Bellevue, Nebraska where we're creating things locally with our candle partner, yeah. sourcing these things and support. And they're local too. And they're local too. Everything's made in the US from them. And you can help build up the American dream here and be a part of that. Um, I would just say like, I don't want to have the expectation. I don't have no, the expectation right. whatsoever. But we want to make it known that it's available. We want to make it known it's available and that the whole product-based front-end store is a product-based business. So yeah. support yeah, Lanier and if Furniture you're, Co. If you're not um, in Bellevue or Omaha, obviously you can order on our online website, FurniereFurnitureCo.com. And yeah. this would be like, I think, I personally think the reed diffusers, the candles, and the um, wax melts, I think that those alone would be excellent like gifts to people, like hostess gifts this holiday season. Um, even like the wax melts could be a cool stocking stuffer. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. I the reed think... diffusers are perfect because you put them in the bathroom, it's like, that's the most perfect place. It's subtle and it overpower like I mean I can't overpower it <laughs> so I feel like if I can't overpower it it might be hard for anybody in the world to overpower it True. but it's just it's nice that it's subtle and like when you step in there and when you leave you smell that versus for the sure. waste that's yeah. produced yeah yeah and of course those are gonna be like our set scents for this year yeah but we're like I said we're already working on the next set of scents so if you have any that you're desiring let us know down below in the comments um but i think that the four slash five that we've got are pretty solid yeah they're gonna be um, our staples no doubt yeah yeah and then like this time of year for them is perfect too because yeah. but i do think that they're all very timeless i agree uh it doesn't really matter the season oh yeah more on the aromas we're gonna be getting more yeah. sizes yeah too we only have the nine ounces in our amber jars right now, but we have 16 ounces and eight, eight ounce, ounce brass, brass options coming. Those tins. are gonna be tins, tins yep. that are coming. So stay tuned for that. Check out the links below, get signed up for our email notification system. So that when we have new products coming in, our rotation of newly sourced inventory, you'll get updates along side. New things coming in. <laughs> That works, right? Yeah. So, all in all, we're really proud of what we've what we've got here growing, and we're really thankful for you guys helping us get to this point, helping us bring this space together, all the support from our brands and from the individuals who yeah. busted a sweat, sent us stuff to help bring this place together. It's we couldn't do it without you guys, and you know that, and. We're super thankful and grateful for all of you who watch as much as you do. Support us watching our videos and engaging, and yeah. liking and sharing and 
all the things. Yeah. Excited for the future. This is If this is what three years of hard work can do, of consistency, being good people, I can't imagine what the next three years is gonna be and we're gonna continue to just do what we do and hopefully more and more people find inspiration right. from that and continue to know that there's a different, I think the biggest goal with FFT that I wanna give off from behind the camera and like what we put out is there are different alternatives in life to create income, but ways to live your life and doing something that means something to you. What would you say? Let me put you on the... Um, just to continue to inspire people and help people along the way. Um, having that creative outlet to potentially earn an extra income, or even if you don't need an extra income, maybe it will put that spark under you again and get you creating again. As we head into 2024, how do you, and we're gonna all hold you to this, how do you want to see yourself evolving now that you have this space on with FFT and this business, how do you wanna see yourself evolve in the next 365 days? I think maybe like getting better with design overall. Like I think I have pretty good taste, but also knowing that it's not only about my taste and being able to like cater to other people's taste, but something that I think would be really neat to offer, I guess, as a part of Fournier would be, um, you know, mock-ups for different furniture or interior design, things like that. So just like diving deeper into kind of styling and staging different things. You know, I feel like I have some knowledge and I can do some of it, but I, I would like to get better at it, I think, for sure. And then also just continuing to better my like execution of tasks and like being more efficient with time so that more can continue to get done. What about you? I would just, it's going to be selfish of me, but it's going to be just personally getting habits and routines carried out daily. I know if I do more personally, like reading, meditating, waking up early, fitness consistently, all of that. Not all of that, it's like five or six things really. Yeah those five or six things get taken care of, I create such a momentum in my life of who I am and like presence and ideas and all of this that the business will see, like it'll grow just because of me, like who I'm being. Right. So for me, it's just being more of a more disciplined and intentional man because everything else will see fruit from that. There you have it. That's our 2024 goals and ways that we would like to evolve what are yours let us know down below make sure you go down to the links check out fournierfurnitureco.com we got a lot of goodies over there we've got some great smelling aromas love to have you guys um, check some of those out and get subscribed and like this video like this video and we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the flip, flip side, side. <laughs>